Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to recreate Jack's text hover effect. This thing over here. Uh, so, I was looking for ideas for my own portfolio last week, so I started looking up a few on YouTube. A video by developer Philip showcased his website two years ago, and when I saw the text hover effect, you know, I told myself I had to recreate it. It only took about a minute to break down what was going on here. And if you have experience with keyframe animation, not just CSS, but drawing too, then you can see what's actually happening. You know, normally people will just right click expect, inspect element and pray that the magic is in here. But as you can see, if you hover over it, you know, nothing's really changing. Wait, that's the wrong one. Hover over it, nothing's really changing other than the class. Because it just has blast in it. So today we're going to learn to recreate it. And this is what we have. You know, it's just it's probably the same. So yeah. So here's the breakdown for it. The whole animation is around one second long. Maybe less. But a lot happens during that time. And our eyes can't keep up with it. There are six phases to it. The initial phase, which is what you see right here. And then the second phase, which is the first hover. On the first hover, it expands in the X, but contracts in the Y. So it stretches in the X, but shrinks in the Y. And then around 400 milliseconds or so, it expands in the Y and contracts in the X. And then the fourth phase is the same as the second phase, where it expands in the X, contracts in the Y. And the fifth phase, it's the same as the third phase, where it expands in dy, but contracts in the x. And then the sixth and last phase is the initial phase. So there you have it. So for this project, we're going to be using React and an animation library called Frame and Motion. So you could do the classic MPX create React app, and whatever you want to call it. And then after that's done, you can do npm install Framer dash motion. You don't have to use frame motion if you don't want to. You can just use regular keyframes. But since frame motion comes with a lot of handy tools to manage our animation, you know, want to take advantage of that. Just a little disclaimer, but this is not a frame motion tutorial, so uh, you need to have some sort of knowledge with frame motion before you jump into this. To start off, you know, we have to do the classic npm start. And while we wait for that to boot up, let's just delete whatever unnecessary file we may have, like the logo, and then probably delete something here too. So now, let's see if it works. You know, make sure there's no errors or anything like that. And we can see our text over here. We want to align it to the center for a better view, so we can target the body tag and give it a height of 100vh. Display a flex. Justify content center, align item center, just so that we could see it. So now that we got that out of the way, we have to create our sentence. And if you look at Jack's sentence, you know, on hover, only the words are jumping up, not the letters. So to create that, we have to uh, split it up into spans. So let's just create our sentence, cons sentence equals to I don't know. This is a tribute to Jack, so hello Jack. And then we want to split it up into an array. Just like that. And let's see if it works. So we want to map over it. Sentence dot map. And we want to pass in the letter and the index because we need that for the key. And then give it the little return. And here we give it a span, and here we put in the letter. And then don't forget about the key, because React doesn't like it when you don't give it a key. Oops, index. Let's see if that works. And we do get a hello jack. Now let's just make it a little bit bigger. Uh, span, font size, 5 rem. Okay, that looks pretty good. So for the next part, let's 
win, increase the font size. Uh, let's separate this return statement the span into another component. Let's call it textspan.js. And over here, we can just um, create it. const textspan goes to parentheses, then return span. And we have to export it. Oops. Oh, uh, text span. And we pass in the children prop. And over here, we can just display it again. In our app here, we have to import it. So import text span from text span. Replace this with text span. See if that works. Saved it. Refresh. Still the same. So it works. So for this part, we have to import frame of motion. This is where the animation comes in. So we have to import motion from framer dash motion. And over here in span, let's replace the span with a motion dot span. And to see if it works, we could just do a uh, while hover extra curly brackets say scale 1.1 okay that doesn't work and that's because we have to give a display of inline block as you can see don't know if you guys can see it but maybe make it a little bit bigger 1.5 here so it works for the next part we're going to be focusing on recreating this in CSS, there's a transform property called scale 3D. It's basically scaling and it scales in the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction. What we're mainly focusing on are just the X and Y. And in frame of motion, we can use keyframes, but it's slightly different than normal CSS. So we can say transform, pass in an array of scale. 3D, pass in the X value, the Y value, and then the Z value. We're not going to touch the Z, so, but it still needs it there. So we created the six phases, right? The initial phase is just 1-1. One, one. Second phase, we have to scale it in the X direction, so give it 1.4. And then the Y, we have to shrink it, so 0.55. Now, the third phase, we can scale it the x direction 0.75, and then the y direction 1.25. The fourth phase is the same as the second phase, so 1.25 has to be less, and then this one to be 85. And then for the fifth phase, we can say 0.9, and over here 1.05. And then the sixth phase is the same as the first one, so no need to change that. In order for this to run, we have to put in a function, or well, don't, you don't have to. Const rubber band equals to arrow function. And then here we return this. And to call it, let's replace this scale with the function name. So while hover, we say we call it a rubber band function. Save it, uh, refresh it, unhover, and there we have it. But the thing is that every time you hover it, the animation starts over. And unlike Jax, you know, his only goes, he, his only plays one time. To fix this, we have to use a hook from Frame of Motion called, well, what's this? Uh, we have to use a hook from Frame of Motion called, um, use animation controls so we can actually control when do we want it to animate and what it takes is let's declare it first cons we can call it controls it goes to use animation controls and over here instead of saying while wow, hover equals to rubber band we can delete that and say uh, animate equals to controls and then on mouse hover, 
mouse over. You can say when called the function rubber band. And in our rubber band function, we can re remove this return statement. And instead, let's say controls dot start, and then we can pass in this function. So now we can test it out and see if it still works the same. And as you can see, it still works the same. And now what we want to do is create a use effect hook. I mean, import a use effect hook from React. Wait, no, use state from React, and we could call it um, const is play, and then set is play, capital P, goes to use effect, not use effect, use state, set it to false. So what this is going to be used for is that on hover, we want to set this to true so that it doesn't play again. So over here, we can say, uh, give an extra pair of curly brackets. Oh, that's a little ugly. And then we can say, um, if it's not playing, then you can call it this, call this. And then over here, when the animation is complete, on animation complete, we can set it back to false. Into false. And then when the animation starts, we set it to true. So here's a breakdown of it again. We created a use state hook to set if it's to see if it's playing or if it's not playing. So on mouse hover, we check if it's playing, its initial state is false. So then we call the function. And on the function, we start the animation. And after that, we set it to true. So next time we hover over it, it won't play again. And then on animation complete, we set it back to false. So now we saved it. Refresh on hover. As you can see, it only plays one time and not just repeatedly play. We can also specify the duration of each of these keyframes with the transition property. Pass in the object of time and give it an array. The array length has to match the keyframe length. So First one, we could say it should be zero. We want the second one to run for like 400 milliseconds or so. The third one, let's just say 0.6. Then the others should be just consecutive numbers. Save it. Let's refresh it. And then you can see there's like a little delay there almost like jacks. So for the last part, we want to fix the spacing over here, because if you see, if we take a look, there's no space over here. But in our sentence, there is space over here. So to fix this, we can turn put this in a ternary operator to check if it's a space. If it is a space, then we can pass in this HTML code, just backslash U00A0, which stands for space. Otherwise, it's passing the letter. And if we save that, you can see there's a space there now. If we inspect the element on it, we'll see that there's a ampersand and BSP semicolon here, which stands for non-breaking space, which is the equivalent as a space. And that's all. You guys can play around with the numbers a little bit, you know, change the scaling a little bit maybe and then change the timing, because if you look at his, his is a little bit faster than ours. I don't know if you guys can see it.
Yeah, probably just a bit. So yeah, I would say just change the timing a little bit. And it should probably be the same. We'll just keep playing around with it. There won't be a source code for this. Or a GitHub link. Because if you follow it along, then you should have it. If you don't have it, then maybe you should follow along. You know. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something new today. And catch you next time.